like to um, post our meetings on, on our YouTube channel and then uh, repost them on our website as well as push them out through social media for folks that aren't able to attend, uh, but do still want to uh, see what happened during our meetings. Um, so for that, we are recording them. Again, my name is Matthew Land. I'm the president of the Miami Beach Democratic Club. Um, thank you all so much for joining us for our first meeting um, of 2021. Um, uh, with that, we will go ahead and start in on the agenda. Um, so uh, I do not believe we've uh, yet reached quorum. Amanda, have we reached quorum already yet or no? Still working on it. Still working on it? Okay, just let me know when we do and then we can okay. get to the uh, minutes from November and December. Um, again, uh, in the chat over here, uh, we do have um, the agenda for tonight's meeting as well as the minutes from November and the minutes from December. We did not have a chance to approve our uh, uh, November minutes at our December meeting because we did not quite reach quorum. Uh, hopefully we'll get there tonight so we can go and get this approved. Um, so we will hold off on the approval Hello? of the minutes. And we'll... to interrupt. What program is this? This is the Miami Beach Democratic Club. I want to learn more. Perfect. Well, you came to the right place. Um, well, if you want to uh, tune into our meeting tonight and if you've got questions, feel free to uh, use the raise my hand feature. If you're using your phone, uh, you can dial star six. Uh, happy to answer questions throughout um, or we can take care of those in new business towards the end of the meeting. Also happy to connect with you all offline um, and we can chat more about the club as well. Pretty cool. Does that sound good? Cool. Yeah. Can I put my email there or, or I don't know? Um, I will, um, I'll, I'm going to put the um, uh, Miami Beach Dems at okay. gmail.com is the, um, is the main email account for the, for the club. So feel free to reach out there. And uh, if you'd like to connect offline, we can absolutely find a time to chat over the phone or ask you guys have like email Facebook or, or Snapchat, Instagram, or, or no? Just we asking. do. We have a Facebook. We have a Twitter. We have an Instagram. I don't think we're on Snapchat. I don't mm -hmm. think we quite adopted TikTok either. Uh, but Steve Hawes um, and Oliva uh, Fernandez, who are our communication co-chairs, um, they will absolutely drop all of those links. There they are, uh, right there in the chat. So you can feel free to check us out wherever we're at. Perfect. Um, all right, well, I will go ahead and move into um, the president's report, or our executive board report. So president's report. Um, first of all, I just, uh, I don't know how you guys are feeling uh, with this new Biden administration. I personally am super, super, super happy. Uh, day one, 17 executive orders, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Started to roll back a lot of the horrible, horrible things that 45 did. Um, and, and, and as he's continuing, we have uh, adopted dogs in the White House that moved in today. That was one of the highlights of my day, uh, which was super exciting. Um, so it's the little things like that that I think are, 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 are making me, at least personally, breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. I hope you all are too. Um, you know, I know that at the end of the day, we were not all as happy with the results from Florida and maybe not even necessarily Miami County, but I do know that at the end of the day, we all did put in a lot of very serious work um, and had a lot of great conversations um, and definitely turned out folks at the polls. Uh, again, while it didn't turn out we wanted to in November for Florida, uh, again, we are still being able to reap those rewards. Um, and having a uh, Senate majority is super awesome. I uh, can't wait to see what happens with that. I know that they are certainly still grappling over the rulemaking with uh, uh, Leader Schumer, M Majority Leader Schumer, and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Great words to say, very, very, very exciting. Um, stuff. So, so, some more to come on that. Uh, and uh, uh, stay tuned to 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 our Twitter feed, our Facebook, because we are trying to highlight a lot of those things that are that are going on, and and so on and so forth in the administration. Um, with that, I wanted to briefly talk about our nominating committee. Um, so, back at our December meeting, we put out the call, and through the month of January, um, for folks who were interested to join our nominating committee. Um, the nominating committee is for our board of direct director elections. Um, and which are happening in March. Um, per our bylaws, our nominating committee uh, must consist of at least five people, um, two of which must not be board of directors members or people who are running for an office. Um, so with that, I would like to congratulate the following um, uh, Miami Beach Democratic Club members, Susan Goldmark and Tim Sprenger for stepping up and, and uh, in a real meaningful way to help us reshape um, the, the leadership of our club. Um, a law, joining Tim and Susan um, are going to be Aaron Boslin, um, who is our Neighborhood and Building Organizing Chair, uh, Patrick Breshek, our Treasurer, 
um, as well as Tim Johnson, um, who is on our board of directors. Um, so over the next month, um, you will be seeing uh, some emails, text messages, possibly even some phone calls, um, encouraging you if you'd like to step up and run for one of our open uh, seats at our March meeting, um, or even uh, uh, running against one of the incumbents. It's always open to do that as well. Um, we have uh, uh, the vice president seat is open, uh, secretary is open, parliamentarian is open. Uh, those are completely open seats. Um, we will be um, sending out information on what are some of the kind of roles and responsibilities for, for, these, for these board seats. Um, and always happy to, to connect you with members of the nominating committee. If you have uh, further questions about that, I'm also happy to chat with you as well, if you do have an interest. Um, and then we also have board seats one and three that are up for re-election. Um, further from that, if you aren't really quite ready to run for a seat on the board of directors, but you uh, want to get even further engaged, uh, we do have open committee chair seats. Uh, we do have uh, committee seats for um, uh, both fundraising as well as our voter registration are both completely open right now. And uh, it's a real opportunity if that's something that is a passion of yours um, to help really uh, you know, shape and form out that committee with other folks that are interested in that as well. Um, so if you do have any interest in any of that whatsoever, either running for a seat or running for um, uh, or, or, or stepping up uh, for one of our committees or even just joining a committee, um, please feel free to email MiamiBeachDems at gmail.com is our main email address. Um, and we will make sure that we appropriately get that email to, um, to the folks um, that, that need to handle that. Um, lastly, our March elections, um, they are coming up. They are on Monday, March the, let me look at the date because I don't know what it is. Uh, Monday, March the... Uh, Sorry to interrupt one. Do you have Twitter? Uh, yes, ma'am, we do. Um, and, and, and those links um, that were posted, uh, that Steve will post again, just for, uh, oh. and, and I'm sure momentarily, are all of our handles so that you can reach us at all of those different uh, social media handles. Oh, is the liquid at the beach, like the where the water, the waves, the ocean is? I'm sorry? Is, is it like a beach? Like a real beach? Or that's the name of the, the town, the place? The Miami Beach Democratic Club. Are you, are you in the right place? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm in New York. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, you're, we, listen, we have folks that are part-timers that live in New York part of the year or other places upstate or, you know, things like yeah. that that are absolutely part of our club. We have people who don't even live in Miami Beach that live on the mainland, that live in downtown oh. or, you know, other places like that that are also part of our club as well. So you're more than welcome to join. Uh, we, yeah. we're, happy to, we're happy to have you. Yeah, I, I want to go to Miami. It's, it's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to go and put you on mute now so we can continue on with our business. All right. Thank you. Um, March elections, sorry about that. Uh, so I was trying to find the date on my calendar. Uh, March elections look like they're gonna be happening on um, da, 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 da. March 15th, is that correct? Correct, March yes. 15th. Yes, sorry, Monday, March the 15th. Um, to be eligible to vote in our board of directors elections, you must be a dues paying member um, by our meeting on February the 22nd. Um, our bylaws do state to be able to vote or to run for one of those offices. You must be a dues paying member then. Um, if you do need to check your membership status um, or anything like that, or you do need to renew or you'd like to join, uh, our dues are $25 a year. And uh, you can go to mybeachdems.org um, and you can uh, check us out there and uh, pay your dues, renew your membership, um, so on and so forth from there. Um, that is really all the report that I have for you all this evening. I think the biggest things were to talk about our nominated committee. So be on the lookout for some emails and, and text messages on that, um, as well as our club elections that are upcoming in March. Um, and with that, um, I will turn it over to our treasurer, Patrick Breshek, um, who's gonna give a report from our December meeting, um, though um, that was included in our minutes, um, but he is gonna update on that as well as on uh, tonight. Take it away, Patrick. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, so just, um, sorry, I'm taking notes uh, since we don't have a secretary too. Um, so our current bank balance is $5,632.59. Um, the only recurring costs that we are having right now are for Zoom, so we can have these in a COVID safe environment, and then our storage unit. So that is uh, $65 that we're spending on Zoom and $63 on the storage unit. Um, and the only other expenditure, which we actually had donations come in, though, so it's a, a wash, but we, um, Amanda did, ran our, our food drive and we um, donated 
dollars and 27 cents to the community church here. So that was, they really appreciated that. And I'm sure she can expand on that when we get to her, so. And if you guys have any questions, um, I, dro I did drop the link in the chat to become a member. So make sure you're um, all paid up if you do want to vote in the uh, election coming up. And that's it. Thank you, Patrick. Um, with that, we'll move into committee reports. Uh, David Geller, would you like to give us a campaign committee report? Yes, good evening. Can you all hear me? Okay, good. I always worried about if people can hear me. All right, so first, um, first thing I want to report on is the Florida Democratic Party has a new chair. Um, they just had their elections, and the new chair of the state party is former Miami Mayor Manny Diaz. So we're going to have a local person representing our state Democratic Party. And I know they're already on to hiring and doing all the things they need to do, reaching out to all the clubs and all the uh, county parties. So, you know, if there's anything coming up, I'll, I'll share it with you all. Uh, second, we do have local elections coming up relatively soon in our part of the county uh, in Surfside. Um, <clears throat> In Surfside, I think it's March 15th. It's sometime in March they're having their election. Bay Harbor Island's gonna have an election in April. Uh, and then in November, there's a lot of things going on. Bell Harbor, North Bay Village, Sunny Isles. And then, you know, just, you know, in two years we have uh, our statewide elections again. And we're probably gonna be hearing from a lot of people, probably locally, uh, who are gonna be running for other offices. So the game of dominoes is gonna start happening, which means there might be more seats open which means there might be special elections that pop up. Um, so that's basically it. The other thing I can tell you is um, I've reached out to a few people who have mentioned they want to be part of this committee. Um, I'm going to put my phone number and email in the chat room right afterwards. Uh, let me know if you're interested. And hopefully within the next week, we can um, you know, have a meeting uh, on the books uh, so we can have our committee meeting real soon so we can really be prepared for these upcoming elections and, and, and everything. So. Uh, that's that's the report. So back to you. Thank you, David. Um, I, I I would just say, um, you know, I think one of the things that we are uh, you know excited about is um, is some of these local elections because we do have folks that live in you know North Bay Village, Bay Harbor Islands, and Surfside and and, and, and other areas that we haven't predominantly put a lot of focus on. Uh, you know, I think a lot of our focus is is primarily been on, on, on the south end of the county. Um, but we are um, hoping to do some expansion of that and you will hear from our guest speaker in just a little bit. Um, uh, and, and David will give her a, a warm introduction, I'm sure. Uh, but we are trying to do a little bit more in the north end of Miami Beach and even further outside for folks that uh, do want to join our club because uh, this is the one that's closest in kind of I guess proximity to them. Um, so very excited about that. Um, and uh, next up, uh, we will hear from, um, give me one second, um, uh, Steve, would you like to give us a communications update, please? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, so for our communications committee, post-election, after the 2020 elections, we've been sending about one email a week to our full list. That's 3,900 folks. It's probably our main uh, method of uh, communications. Um, we send out texts to our paid membership. Currently about 121 people are opted in to our texts for important events such as um, this meeting, other very important dates. We try not to text too often. Um, and we're trying to just you know, keep posting on our social media channels, the main ones that we're active on, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. So um, I am going to drop again, all of those social handles into the chat. So please, um, like us, uh, leave a comment, ask a question, let's interact. There you go. And that's it. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, 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 we do want folks to engage with us on social media. So if you do see one of our posts, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share. Uh, it is always <laughs> super helpful to get other, you know, more engagement and more folks out there uh, getting the message from the Miami Beach Democratic Club. Uh, next up, we will have, um, uh, fundraising chair is vacant right now. Um, Aaron Boslin is not able to attend our meeting this evening to give us a neighborhood and building organizing uh, update. Um, he has started working on uh, formulating a plan um, to do some uh, serious outreach in North Beach, Mid Beach, and South Beach, um, as well as um, working with some of the neighborhood associations. 
um, to see how we can start engaging them a little bit more, uh, getting more access to some of their buildings, finding good, strong Democrats in those buildings as well, and things like that. Um, you know, organizing is not the easiest or the most fun work, uh, but as we are looking towards 2022, um, that this is the type of work that we will need to do so we can hopefully be successful in taking back the governor's mansion, uh, taking back a Senate seat, um, you know, with Rubio for re-election and things like that. So um, stay tuned. If you do live in a building um, uh, and you do want to organize your own building, we are always happy to provide you with a uh, list of names of Democrats that are registered to vote in your building uh, to do outreach to, um, to make sure that they're signed up to uh, one register to vote, to vote by mail, um, give them reminders about elections or upcoming either, uh, upcoming as well. Um, with that, uh, I will turn it over to, give me just one second, I will turn it over to Amanda Knapp, our outreach chair. Hi, oh, sorry, I'm doing quorum still. Um, but happy new year to everyone. Um, it was really exciting. We did the food drive. So thank you um, for everyone who donated. Um, we donated $320 worth of food. Um, and the church was really, really thankful. So in these hard times, I think it's great. We're helping the community. Um, so thank you again, if you donated. Um, and just so everyone knows, it's the Miami Beach Community Church, the one on Lincoln Road. Um, and we've been helping them the last couple years. So I think it's great. Um, and then this Sunday at 1 p.m., we're doing the, the Venetian Park cleanup. Um, so that's at 1 p.m. Um, we did it, uh, I believe, two years ago. Um, and we got a lot of garbage from the water. Um, I guess the, the garbage falls off the boats. And then um, so we, we, we did it about, I believe, two years ago. Um, so you don't have to bring anything um, if you want to bring your own gloves. Um, but we will have bags and picker upper thingies and um, gloves. Um, but if you do want to bring your own, and I would just say bring a water bottle. And again, that's in the Venetian Causeway, right before the toll booth on the left hand side at 1pm. Perfect. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate it. Um, I know uh, I didn't get a chance to make it to the last beach cleanup, but I'm excited to be at the one this um, this uh, this uh, next coming Sunday. Are there any? Um, are, how are we doing as far as attendance? Do are we? Is it because we're capped at a certain amount? Is that correct or no? Uh, yeah, we're we're capped now. Um, we have sixty people signed up. Okay, well, <laughs> but my from my experience, the last time we did it, only half signed up. Who uh, only half attended? who signed up. Um, so I, I would say if you want to come, come, because I'm, okay. I'm people always RSVP and then don't show, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we hope to see you this Sunday, January 31st at 1 p.m. on the Venetian Park. Uh, there's very limited parking there, I believe. So uh, uh, ride share, carpool, uh, walk, park on you know Sunset Harbor, something like that. Um, uh, so you can uh, get over there. And we hope to see you Sunday. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Bill Warren. I believe you are on uh, to give us a program update. Good evening, everybody. And again, happy new year. Good to see everybody in the new year and um, doing well. Uh, I don't have much to, I just wanna mainly just say good evening to everybody, but the, the, uh, the program committee, um, we have attracted uh, a couple of new people uh, on the on the on the Zoom meeting tonight, uh, Stephanie Rios is on here somewhere, and she's a recent uh, she a recent transplant from New York, but she joined our group. But she used to live here before. But after many years in New York, she's back in Miami again, Miami Beach, and uh, she's going to join my committee along with uh, Cheryl Unger, and uh, hopefully a couple of more people. But tentatively, we got a meeting scheduled for next week, Wednesday, uh, a Zoom meeting. And uh, we hope that uh, anybody else who's interested in joining our meeting to do some brainstorming. Uh, Stephanie got a marketing background. So that's, that'll be very valuable to our group. Uh, so anyone else who's interested, uh, please let me know. And uh, I will send you the information on, uh, on a Zoom meeting. So uh, that's about it. Um, thank you very much. Perfect. And I, I Steve, uh, great idea. Bike there, uh, Commissioner, biking, uh, yes. 
Uh, that I, thank you. I left that one out, but that is definitely good what we should be doing as well. Um, I appreciate that. Use people mover. Yes, there you go. There's lots of other options on, on, on how to get there. Uh, very exciting, Bill. Um, so keep a lookout for um, the programming committee meeting next week. And um, again, if you don't necessarily want to join a committee, but you have some ideas as to what you want to see happen with our club programming you'd like to see, uh, feel free. Again, you can always reach out to us at MiamiBeachDems at gmail.com. Um, I, we do not have um, our, our uh, sorry, I'm trying to get back to my agenda real quick. Uh, voter registration committee is, is vacant and Matt Moran is not here this evening for a data update. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to David Geller um, to introduce our guest speaker, uh, North Bay Village Commissioner, uh, Rachel Straightfield. All right, you can all hear me again, right? Okay, good. Um, so, so I'm here to introduce our newest uh, North Bay Village Commissioner, Rachel Streitfeld. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Rachel Streitfeld was born and raised in South Florida and from an early age, and I, I looked at your bio, by the way, uh, at an early age, she was extremely involved in our community. In high school, um, she was a student body president. At the same time, she was the captain of the women's soccer team. Um, she went to college at George Washington University, majored in Middle Eastern studies and political science, and actually spent a semester living in Cairo, where she attended American, the American University and lived in the Nile River. I think that's amazing. Um, while in Washington, D.C., she also worked in the office of Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and uh, she ended up going to law school and is now a practicing land use, zoning, and environmental attorney. She's absolutely a rising star in our party. She's worked tirelessly for Democrats up and down the ballot for years, and we welcome her to the Miami Beach Democratic Club. Thank you, Commissioner, and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Geller. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. It's really nice to see all your, this is my first big Zoom really of the year. So it's really nice to see all of you. Um, I wanted to, you know, introduce myself, tell you a little bit more about my background and what brought me to the commission in North Bay Village, right across the bay from the beach, obviously. Um, but I wanted to just talk about tonight, um, you know, some of my takeaways from the 2020 cycle. I'm not a, an expert. I'm not a pollster. I don't really live and breathe this stuff, um, but I do care very deeply. So I was going to share some of my 2020 cycle reflections, um, how, how I feel about advocacy in the age of Biden-Harris and Daniela Levine-Cava. Um, and then uh, I was going to also talk about ways that we can work together, North Bay Village and Miami Beach. Um, so as David said, I'm a South Florida girl. I grew up in plantation. Um, the Gellers and the Streitfelds actually way back. My dad was a judge in Broward my whole life. My mom was an editor of the Miami Herald. So from a very early age, I was inundated with local news and my parents gave me a sense of, um, you know, the importance of what's right and what's true, um, but also a sense of, you know, what you say and what you do matters in, in your local government. So um, I went to GW for undergrad and I started interning for DWS almost as soon as she was elected. I mean, right after she was sworn in, we had almost no staff. I was interning. It was me, a staff assistant, a, a staff and the congresswoman and maybe one other staffer. We barely had our phone system set up. So to be with her at the beginning of that journey and to watch her build what I would say is one of the most aggressive constituent outreach programs um, on Capitol Hill was really, really useful. And it absolutely to this day informs how I think about public service. Um, if you have not met uh, your former Congresswoman, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, um, I hope that you do get the chance because she is truly a force of nature um, and an incredible person. Uh, I. I was at GW and then I worked in Washington DC for an advocacy organization that is a little bit controversial. Um, if you've heard of J Street, maybe you have a negative reaction, maybe you have a positive reaction, um, but I, I love Israel. I've been to Israel a 
bunch of times and I went to summer camp there as a kid and it was an early dream of mine to be a diplomat and you know working for an agitating advocacy organization was sort of like you know shoot for the moon and even if you miss you land among the stars kind of thing so Jace working as a lobbyist on Capitol Hill on one of the most controversial politicized issues taught me a lot about how to bridge relationships across the aisle, how to talk about certain issues, and how to tell a story. Uh, I left J Street in 2013. I was a lobbyist, and then I was the Southern Regional Political Director for J Street, which is when I moved back down to South Florida. Um, and I started at University of Miami Law School in 2013, and I've been practicing land use and zoning uh, in Miami since 2016. I have my own practice. My first case ever, actually, uh, on my own, was one of the historic houses south of Fifth that was in danger of being demolished to make way for a single family home that was going to be like four stories with a rooftop amenity and they were reducing a 19 and a half foot setback to two feet and my client and I were able to um, stop that demolition and that historic house is not only is it still standing but the new owner has worked really closely with the historic preservation board on the beach to to renovate the home but keep the original character of the founding period of Miami Beach. So that was a huge win. Um, I ran for commission here in North Bay Village only after living here for three years. When I first moved here as a zoning attorney, I was like, oh, let me just check out what their commission meetings are like. And it was the most toxic environment I'd ever been in um, with members of the commission and the mayor at the time scolding our residents and the residents running through a laundry list of grievances during um, the public comment period. And there was no collegiality, there was no respect, and it was just a really, really bad environment. We had a mayoral election in 2018 and Brent Latham was elected our mayor and he is one of the most wonderful human beings on the planet. And as soon as Brent got involved um, and made sustainability and resilience priority, that's when I decided to get involved with the community. So I was the vice chair of our brand new sustainability and resilience task force. And we have, I think, really gotten caught up to speed to where you all are on Miami Beach. I mean, obviously what, what you all have been able to do with grants and public-private partnerships um, in the last couple of years, as far as your sea level rise adaptation projects and your resilience efforts are really, really um, a great model for us. Um, there, was, there was someone in the seat before I had it uh, she was uh, forced to resign and I had already declared that I was running and I was appointed to fill the seat and then I was elected unopposed. Um, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience so far. And, you know, we have a lot that we can work on together and I'm looking forward to doing that. So that's just a quick bio. Um, you know, 2020 was obviously a horrendous experience for all of us. Um, I don't really think it needs to be said. Um, personally, on Wednesday, I took the day off work, I drank mimosas, and I just sat there and let it all just sort of wash away. Um, and I, you know, like so many of you, was so deeply inspired um, of dress, more than, of course, by election of Kamala Harris as our vice president. What really got me was the promise of Amanda Gorman. Um, and that's my, my first key takeaway from the 2020 um, is, is elevate, elevate the young black women in unity. Um, I, you know, I have so much respect for all of the on this call who are not young black women are doing a great job. We're all doing, um, and I, I think, you know, there's room for everything, but to me, uh, power and promise of Amanda Gorman is something that I actually feel we have in Miami-Dade County, like in, in an abundance. 
Um, there are so many incredibly soulful, brilliant um, people in our community whose voices are not heard. And um, I really would love to see our party um, engage with more type of organizations, not on a partisan level. Because sure, we all wear the hats, like we're Democrats, you know, try and true, bleed blue, but not everything we have to, we do has to wear a partisan all the time. And in this era of unity, uh, as the president has encouraged us all to embrace, um, I think that it gets a little bit tricky because of politics. You know, obviously the insurrection was not our fault. Uh, was, I think the most horrifying manifestation of the danger and divisiveness. And again, even though we didn't contribute to that atrocity, I do think it's incumbent upon all of us to speak a language of unity. And when the, when the opportunity presents itself to just be good people, living our values without kind of shoving it down people's throats that we're Democrats. I think it might take us a long way as we, as we rebuild after this cycle. Um, you know, feel much more comfortable in a room full of progressive people. Um, but I do really enjoy engaging with people who identify as Republicans, as they are, you know, interested in facts. Um, I think that for us to discount um, 75 million Americans uh, would be very dangerous. So I really, um, am looking for common ground all over the place. Um, this is a little bit of a tangent, but we are um, a really interesting place now in the state of Florida where governor, while he does things that we all think are appalling and shameful and we, we may disagree with a lot of what he's done have a governor who has prioritized environmental restoration um, and who has funded everglades restoration um, our state legislature passed a stormwater quality bill in the last session and dep and the water management districts are now in in rulemaking at the state level to strengthen our water quality standards in this state for the first time in a real way since the 1980s. And that's something that you care about. That's something that I care about. That's something that Republicans care about. Um, if you are a Floridian, you care about water quality. Um, so I am looking forward to um, being able to, to work with people who you know, don't share the same party affiliation as I, as I have on issues like that infrastructure is is another big one um so that's so that's the, the first takeaway was um elevating the voices of of young black women you know we had a, a lot of black women run for county commission and other offices in our area um there were some really hard fought primaries sabrina fulton was inspiring tisa mcgee um and uh I'm sorry, Jepsy Meadows was also very inspiring. And I wanna see more of these women. I wanna see more of these women. I wanna see more women like that. Beach Commission is not as diverse. Love to see more diversity on the Miami Beach Commission. And I would encourage running to, to, you know, get going, start, start working on those things. Um, we also elected two young women to our school board, one of them who happens to be with us this evening, Lucia Baez-Geller. Um, I was so proud to endorse Lucia because not only is she the, you know, is she a, an incredible human being, um, but she is a teacher, or she was a teacher. Are you still teaching? Not, no, yeah. you're not, okay. Not allowed. <laughs> okay. 
that's like a, that's a conflict right yeah okay yeah got it <laughs> um but her voice is was so underrepresented um, and we, this representation, it matters. I see it on our commission in North Bay Village, just by being there, by being in the room, by being at the table and being engaged, she's changing the conversation by bringing her voice to the table. And those impacts are so significant. Um, and and um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my friend, Louisa. Uh, Louisa also got elected to the school board uh, an immigrant to this country um and you know she ended up at georgetown and now she's on our school board so stories like we need we need more stories like like that um not just in our party but for our our county as a community um i do just want to touch on sort of the advocacy i spoke a little bit about advocacy in the biden harris era and, and the point of that was really just the the unity is is finding ways to make our arguments based on um a moral and ethical code to us versus them democrat versus republican um i want us to to re reinstill the the values of of our system of government i mean i think there is a deep um there's like a chasm between those of us who really understand how the constitution works um, and those who do not and we need to do something to address that chasm and and we need to do it quickly um because our our institutions have held strong for um you know centuries but they were they were tested and there are too many people, just anecdotally, I'm sure you guys have, have met these people in your building, at your job, in your life, who really don't understand what checks and balances and separation of powers means. And um, that, that honestly, it scares me a little bit. So, so reinstilling confidence in our institutions and, and helping people to, to understand um, what, what the constitution says is, is really critical. Um, I am encouraged that we have in the mayor's office. Um, and one of the things that was interesting about is that she was elected in a nonpartisan race, whereas, you know, we lost our congresswoman, Donna Shalala. Um, the dynamics here in Miami-Dade County are completely befuddling, and I'm going to leave it to somebody who studied them to, to like, you know, elaborate on that. But Daniela's election was nonpartisan. She spoke to our values. She spoke to our environment. She spoke to workers' rights, um, and she spoke to housing and transportation. And these local issues are nonpartisan, and I think if we can really focus on on our local issues in a nonpartisan way, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go farther than we would if we approached it in a in a partisan way. Um, so I mean, I'm encouraged by what's what's happening at the county level as well. Um, and, you know, I think the last thing that I will talk about is uh, sea level rise and resilience. Um, this is sort of my bailiwick that I, I wear the hat on um, making sure that we're something uh, to address our vulnerability. You know, North Bay Village is a very small community of islands. We have about 8,000 um, residents and we're, we're at sea level. You know, our, our islands were dredged in the 1940s from the bottom of Biscayne Bay. They built seawalls, they paved the roads, and now we have this community. And many of our seawalls in North Bay Village are like those original 1945 seawalls. So we're super, super vulnerable. Um, and we've been looking to you guys on Miami Beach uh, for definitely for our, we have a new seawall standard ordinance that is modeled after your Miami Beach seawall ordinance. Um, we are right now, going out to do a stormwater master 
plan, which you all absolutely have. Um, but the costs of adaptation are going to continue to increase. And what you do on the beach with your stormwater affects our quality of life in North Bay Village and vice versa. So as united as we can be on that front um, would be really wonderful. I really would love it if we could get together and do regular clean rate that you have so many people volunteering to clean up on the Venetian this weekend. It's really exciting. Um, that should be our regular thing. And, and you know, we need to we we all need to step up, step up because the jurisdictional agencies, Fish and Wildlife, DEP, like they're not gonna do it. They're just not gonna do it. FDOT is not gonna clean up the Kennedy Causeway. So we have to do it. Um, and it would be great for all of us to work together. Um, just really quickly, I will share that as far as, you know, I don't know how many of you live in North Beach, but for those of you who do, you cross the Kennedy Causeway probably on, on a daily basis. Um, you're gonna see some changes in the next couple of years. We just in North Bay Village are about to approve a significant rezoning of the Kennedy Causeway. We're adding density. Um, we are having a, you know, it was already a mixed use corridor, but we're passing an incentive for development, much like what you did in North Beach, so that developers who come in and get their permits within two years of passage of our ordinance will have an added density bonus. But we're also in talks with FDOT to turn the Kennedy Causeway into a complete street. Um, in a dream world of my way would be reduced from three lanes to two. The signals would Revamped so that they make sense, you know, having them all green at the same time or red at the same time, so it's up and go away. We want wider sidewalks. We want a protected bike lane. Um, North Bay Village is an extraordinarily walkable community, and nobody walks because the threat of being is actually very, very real. Um, so, so hopefully we will see more development on the Kennedy Causeway, um, and you're definitely going to start seeing some changes in the next year that pans out um yeah i think i'll just close it there i mean i could i could chat for a very long time i'll take questions if anyone has questions um but you know it's only been a couple months on the north bay village commission and one of the things that i love most about it is that you know four out of five of us are democrats um and the lone republican is doing a great job she is very well loved by our community and we work together very very well because local issues are nonpartisan, um and that makes me very happy commissioner i love it uh one you already answered my question which was how many uh, how many members of the North Bay Village Council or Commission are Democrats? So that's good to know that you have a lot of strong support for any types of progressive issues that you might want to be uh, shepherding through your commission. Um, and I loved hearing about your your initiatives, your the the sea level rise and and the quality of water and the Biscayne Bay and and infrastructure and transportation. I think those are all things that we over here in Miami Beach just a quick hop, skip, and a jump away all enjoy and care about so much. Um, do, if folks have some questions, please use the raise my hand feature. Um, and if you're dialing from your phone, I don't think anybody is, but you can always di dial star six. Um, is there any legislation right now that you're working on um, that, 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 that we should be that we should be aware of? Um, you know, I think the reason is, is good for be aware of. We are, you know, going to rezone not rezone, but, but zone for the most part. Um, uh, let me not say that. We're, we're changing our zoning code um, to opt to sea level rise. Uh, you know, we have a new Florida building code as J1 that increased our base flood elevations and um, gives a little bit for, for us who want to build higher. And we're, we're modeling our um, our, our ordinance for an understory. Each are, are in to not build on fill, but to create an understory so that you, you park underneath the first floor. Um, and so we're, we're looking to do, 
we have a new dog park um, that I would like to invite all of you to. I mean, it's not completely new. It's been around for about a year, but it's on Harbor Island next to the Shell gas station. And it's really chill. There's not a whole lot of people there. I've been going every morning and it's really kind of empty. So if you want a quiet place to take your dog in the morning, please come to North Bay Village. Um, no, but we, we have a construction ordinance that is going to be heard on second reading in February. Um, we don't have any sort of stormwater protection plan for our construction sites in North Bay Village. Um, and, and that's a problem because there's a ton of properties under construction right now. On my street alone, um, there, were, there have been two vacant lots side, to, side by side for the last three years. And since this insane real estate boom, um, both of those lots are under development. Oh, and that's, you know, I just, I want to say something about the real estate boom and the, the tech boom. I'm sure everyone has seen Mayor Suarez all over social media talking about Miami as the next Silicon Valley. I think it's great for us to be attracting directors to our community, but I am very that inequality will be exacerbated by uh, this, this wave of, of, especially with the New Yorkers coming down and compounding um, the stress in our real estate market. So, you know, the same issues that we as a party have always fought for, you know, wages um, and affordable housing, these fights are going to be harder. We need to be louder. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be in a partisan fashion, especially because this is, these are going to be local issues. They should be addressed in local vernacular, not partisan vernacular. We don't want to be a community. Our workers cannot afford to live here. There are lots of other places around the country, some in our own backyard, like Monroe County, you know, where firefighters and teachers and paramedics cannot afford to live there. And we don't, you know, we, we I think we already are kind of a place like that. And, and we need to do everything that we can to make sure that there is affordable housing for the people who are working every day in this community year round. Um, I feel about that. So I, I, you know, I hope that the party um, can speak meaningful way uh, in, in, in a sustained way. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner. If there are no other questions, thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, uh, we look forward to having you join us again and seeing uh, how there's ways where we can partner together. Thanks, Thanks for Commissioner. Me. Thank you. Um, all right, we will move into, is there any new business for the evening? Does anybody have any new business they wanted to bring up or address? All right, seeing no new business, no hands, no, no waving hands, I'm not seeing any. Um, we will, uh, just very quickly as a quick reminder, um, if you um, have not um, uh, yet paid your dues and you still need to pay them, if you'd like to become a dues pay member, uh, you can go to Miami Beach Dems dot org um, and uh, uh, pay your dues to become a member. You must be a dues paid member by February the 22nd in order to vote in our March elections. Uh, and then again, we are holding our park cleanup at the Venetian Park this Sunday from 1 until 4 p.m. Uh, feel free to contact Amanda. There's more details on our Facebook page and where you can sign up there as well. Um, all right, everybody, we will see you on uh, February the 22nd if we don't see you sooner. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night.